Hello again. I'm going to finish up the section on polymers talking about polymer bonding. And it's perhaps the most important part of polymer processing is actually bonding the different components together. Um, a tight bond is essential to ensure the integrity of the device. So we'll talk about some methods of bonding in the next few slides. So we've spoken to this point about the different methods of fabrication. So in this uh, catheter device here, you have an extruded tube, maybe a compression molded piece, uh, maybe an injection molded cap, injection molded um, port here. And these are assembled uh, in some way uh, to ensure um, that uh, this does not come loose and then this doesn't come loose from the device, but maybe this plastic cap is easy to remove. Uh, so the bonding and jointing is very important. Uh, likewise, we have some uh, bonded devices here um, and with uh, pacemaker leads, so there's a, uh, the pacemaker leads might be coated with a polymer coated uh, and then there is some uh, fine assembly work here as well. So the different methods of joining and bonding are um, solvent and chemical bonding, uh, UV, curable adhesives, swaging or push push, which are similar types, uh, cyanacrylic glues, ultrasonic welding, laser welding, radio frequency, and there's screw connectors and newer locks. Uh, so we'll go through some of these, not all, uh, but they are all very uh, similar. So solvent bonding is where a number of plastic components are joined together using chemicals or glues to form the bond. Uh, so the chemical softens the polymer and causes the, the polymer components to, to weld or merge together. And then the solvent evaporates and the component is bonded. It's usually used for um, bonding plastic components, uh, particular PVC, and the main uh, solvent used is cyclohexanone, but a tetrahydrofluorine is also used, or THF. So they are the main solvents used in solvent bonding. Um, it can form a better bond than maybe radio frequency for certain types of plastics, which is why it would be used. Uh, it bonds very well with PVC, polyurethanes, polycarbonates, and ABS, uh, which we have talked about in the different sections of this course. Uh, very applicable medical polymers, PVCs used in catheters, uh, polyurethane, polycarbonates, ABS are used for different connectors and sections of the catheter as well. So it's very inexpensive, it's very simple. There's no expensive equipment required to apply the solvent bond and the technology is well understood in the industry. Uh, it cures very quickly and it does form a good bond. Now, disadvantages are that the solvents have safety risks and concerns and require good extraction uh, systems. And with the current uh, project called REACH uh, that's happening in Europe at the moment where um, all chemicals used in industry have to be, um, I suppose, researched and, and their impact known, then this may have an impact on solvent bonding. The application has to be, to be precise to ensure no area of the plastic is mixed, which missed, which could give rise to subsequent critical leaks. Okay, so that was solvent bonding. The next type is UV and light curable adhesives. Um, so these are adhesives such as epoxy resins, uh, so it would, might be a, th a thermal setting adhesive. So thermal set polymers are, are polymers uh, that set in, in that hard uh, crystalline structure uh, that won't soften again. Um, and they are generally cured using a UV light. The curing time is very quick. The materials are typically non-toxic. Uh, fluorescence Tracing can be added to identify the bonded areas. So it's a bit more expensive than ordinary solvent bonding and it does require the application of UV light and the components involved must be transparent. So cyanacrylate then, it's 
the more commonly known as super glue. So the super glue that you buy in the store, uh, Crazy Glue is a brand name, is a cyan acrylate. Um, so it's very fast acting. It utilizes moisture present on the surface to act as a catalyst to start the reaction. Uh, it's similar in cost to UV curing adhesives and it'll bond tissues, so human tissues it'll bond plastics metal ceramics and glasses okay so uh, it's a it's an excellent um, polymer for uh, acting as a glue it has a poor shelf life and it does require refrigerated storage so that would be the disadvantage and um, now cyanacrylates were tr traditionally used for bonding tissues um, during surgery it has a minimal um, toxicity risk but that there is a toxicity risk at the same time. So like solvent, um, the, the application of it has to be very precise. Um, so they were more kind of uh, chemical methods, I suppose, of bonding um, ultrasonic, uh, radio frequency, or, or physical methods of bonding. So with the ultrasonic welding, you apply a high frequency vibration to the surfaces to be joined. This causes the material to soften, flow, weld, and solidify in a fraction of a second, joining the parts together. So it's easily automated and it provides an excellent bond or joint. So the main disadvantage is um, the cost of the equipment and high going, ongoing maintenance costs involved. But you achieve an excellent bond and it's very safe. Laser welding, a similar concept to uh, ultrasonic. Here you're using a laser to soften uh, the material and get it to weld and solidify. So it's very suitable for high precision work and jointing of complex geometric shapes. It's a, it yields a very strong weld, especially using similar or dissimilar plastics. And again, the disadvantages, the equipment involved and the expensive um, aspects of purchasing and maintaining that equipment. So swaging is a, um, a physical method of bonding. So one component is pressed into another and the, achieve, the joint is achieved through an interference fit. So if I try and draw a diagram, so if this is one piece, the second piece is, is pushed into it. The fit is interference, which means that um, the diameter of this here that I'm tracing out at the moment should be just slightly larger than the other piece. So you're, you're pushing it in and you're causing an interference fit. Um, so that is very, very difficult to break it apart again. So it's most often used in tubing. A metal ring is pressed onto the tube and this assembly in turn is pressed into another component such as a hull. The pressing is achieved by mechanical means. Uh, it's a process utilised for mounting needles onto syringes. So that would be a good application if you're familiar. So this would be the syringe, at, um, the bottom of the syringe here, and the needle is swaged onto it. Okay, so uh, it's an interference fit. The diameter here of the needle is slightly smaller than the syringe, and, and you, you press it and you give it a little twist to get it on. Okay, so I've covered some of the uh, bonding methods there. So we've covered solvents, UV curable adhesives, um, cyanacrylate glues, ultrasonic welding, laser welding, and swaging. And that's all I will cover as part of this course. So thank you.